Hey Rockstars, it's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. So how many of you guys have heard Kelly Rowland's new single that she just released yesterday called Dirty Laundry? Dirty Laundry, which is a song that I believe was written and produced by The Dream, is a sort of biographical tale about her life uh, after she left Destiny's Child and uh, some of the things that she went through. Um, In the song, she expresses that uh, while she was very happy for her girl Beyonce, who had went on to, you know, get, uh, you know, get even bigger stardom from her album that came out uh, Dangerously in Love, and, you know, she was really riding the wave, going up higher and higher and higher. Kelly, in the opposite, was getting lower and lower and lower. It was sort of like she had this feeling like she was happy for Beyonce, but kind of it was like bittersweet because she didn't know what she was going to do next she very clearly did not have a music career she was not the star we all knew who kelly Rowland was but uh, she wasn't really the person that we looked to um when we looked at destiny's child i know y'all gonna get down in the comment section and tell me how you always felt like kelly was better than De- beyonce i don't really care about any of that whoever you like is fine i like kelly i like beyonce fine supposedly after she broke up with uh, destiny's child she was going through some relationship issues whoever she was with at the time was beating her had even tried to get into her head enough to, to tell her that uh you know beyonce don't care about you look at where you are look at where she is you know that kind of whole thing and for a minute there i guess she was believing it so i guess her and Beyonce's relationship had become strained at one point they didn't talk for some time she said that she missed her whatever okay so the song what I feel about the song is the song is cool I think the song is good for the message that it is I don't really think it's a song that I ever need to hear again once I hear it once I don't really need to hear it anymore it's not like it has a good melody it's not like something you would pop in your CD player or your iTunes uh, playlist or whatever and keep on repeat it's not one of those kind of songs it's actually doesn't really even seem like it has a melody it's kind of just her talking it it really kind of makes you think of like the R. Kelly songs that he would have when he was really telling more of a story than really singing the song. Yeah, it's sad that she had to go through all of that. I don't I don't know who she's talking about. I was asking on Facebook yesterday who everybody thought she was talking about. A lot of people were saying that they thought it was the Roy Williams guy that she was engaged to. Y'all remember she was engaged to the football player and he called the wedding off um, right before they were supposed to get married. Supposedly he just wasn't ready and he felt like he was being rushed into it and y'all remember we had been seeing Kelly and uh, she was on the bride magazine pick taking pictures and all this and all of a sudden he was just like oh yeah about that wedding thing i don't think we gonna do it i remember feeling really embarrassed and sad for her because i was just like damn i mean that that's, that's all we heard about was that wedding and then all of a sudden it was like the rug was pulled out from under her feet but he came out on twitter yesterday and was just like no it's definitely not me I did not beat her. That's not who she's talking about. After I heard the song, I didn't think that it was him either because in the song, she kind of alludes to whoever it was. It was somebody in the music industry. I didn't know who really she dated in the music industry, but somebody told me that she was dating some choreographer out here in Atlanta named Divine. And they also said that she dated Nelly's manager at one time. Maybe it could be any of those people or anybody else. I mean, I don't really know. Who do you guys think that it is that she's talking about? If you guys have heard the song, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah y'all gonna chime in on it um do you think that this was something that we'd even needed to talk about at this point is maybe it's like a personal healing for her own self okay maybe it's because i don't really even know if you're not gonna say who it is and i mean really what i mean why do we people why do we do this do we really want folks to know that we was getting ass beat at one time i mean maybe you do i've never been beat i've never been hit by anybody so i don't really know if that gives you this feeling of getting it off your chest or what so we'll see how the song does it was definitely a big splash yesterday on the internet i mean everybody was talking about it i've seen a few videos about it so yeah kelly has had a a, a difficult road in life but uh you know what that makes us stronger sometimes so good for kelly kelly is doing just fine today sometimes we just gotta go through some things before we can get to the better parts of life right Speaking about Beyonce, and I know y'all gonna be like, she always wanna talk about Beyonce. I can talk about whoever the hell I wanna talk about. If I just wanna sit here and go, Beyonce, 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 as many times as I want to, guess what? I'm gonna do that, okay? So y'all remember that when you're in the comments. Speaking of Beyonce, she canceled her concert in um, 
Belgium, Antwerp, I think it's called. Yeah, Antwerp, Belgium. She canceled her um, her uh, concert that she has scheduled because she was feeling dehydrated and exhausted. This is coming on the heels of everybody, including myself, thinking that she was pregnant. She had like a strange little poochy looking area in that dress that she wore to the wore to the Met Met Gala ball. So then she cancels the concert. Okay, so I was just like, yeah, exhaustion. You know, first of all, when was the last time that you heard of Beyonce canceling a concert? Never, right? Okay, because she's never done that. We know she's had some issues with pregnancies in the past. I think the the, the last baby seemed like she, it went through without a hitch. I mean, it seemed like she was fine, even though I know some of you guys think that she wasn't even pregnant to begin with. Um, if she is indeed pregnant this second time, maybe that shit is a little bit harder on the body. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is it do put you through a little bit extra that second time around i don't know if she is or isn't pregnant she's her camp is not saying that she is actually they are still denying that she's pregnant but you know other people are saying that she's going to come out um and say that she is pregnant um at the bet awards um at the end of june and uh you know so that all remain to be seen i guess they don't want to say if she's pregnant or not until they get through the first trimester is, is that what the big secret is because if, if that ain't it i really don't understand what the problem is like are you pregnant or not but maybe because she's had problems in the past maybe she's now cautious about letting everybody know i mean they've always been real private about their lives or whatever so whatever she did get back out there on the stage the next day and uh, you know she wrote a little personal letter to everybody Everybody to let everybody know that she is so sorry that she's never done anything like that before she will promise to give them a bigger and better show than ever and she came on back out and performed the next day so we'll see it remains to be seen I know one thing it is strange for her to be on tour not have any new music um, or just talking to singing this one song grown woman like uh, you know why be on tour if it's something that everybody has already seen now so so some part of me makes me feel like she is pregnant and she's not going to release any new music because she doesn't want to be pregnant and trying to perform all these new songs when she could you know just wait and you know just bust on y'all like she really liked to do when she's all you know down to her small size and can move the way she wants to and all that so anyway that's it y'all Beyonce she canceled the concert she's back on stage is she or is she not pregnant a little bit of gossip about uh, the the whole Met Gala uh, Kim Kardashian Kanye West mess that damn dress that Kim had on well I got a little bit of gossip for you guys supposedly the guy that made the dress his name is Ricardo TC or Tishi I'm, I'm not I might not be saying that right um, but it's he is a designer for Givenchy and he is rumored to be the boyfriend of Kanye West. They say that they're best friends, but the rumor is that he is the boyfriend of Kanye West. And supposedly, Kim Kardashian is serving as the beard for Kanye West, okay? So, this guy, Ricardo, he designed the dress for Kim, knowing that it was gonna be as disastrous as it was, <laughs> Kind of like he kind of like purposely made a dress that was ugly to make her look a mess because you know she's going with his man um i don't know if there's some ill feelings between him and kim kardashian and he acts like it is and he even said in an interview he kind of like let the cat out of the bag and said you know how much he loves kim kardashian how she's good for his best friend and that they're going to be getting married soon and um while he didn't never say any names when he said his best friend everybody knew it was um, kanye west so it was sort of like he's kind of like giving shade but real underhandedly so all that being said they're saying that ricardo tc kim kardashian kanye west they're all at the met gala kanye west is pissed not at the fact that kim kardashian is getting ridiculed over this dress and how ridiculous she looked but the other rumor is that why Kanye is so pissed is because Ricardo is pic is posting pictures of him and Frank Ocean the entire night on Instagram. And I'm talking about pictures of them hugged up, pictures of them, you know, kind of looking like they might be in a hotel room, pictures of just like bowls taking off shirts, like just no clothes. Um, it's all very, very, um, looks like something was going on with Frank Ocean and this Ricardo guy. And supposedly, Kanye West was pissed about the fact that his his boyfriend, or best friend, whichever way you want to look at it, was all cozy with Frank Ocean. <laughs> so that's what the tea is, y'all. Kanye West is pissed that Frank Ocean then snuck in the back door and stole his man. 
y'all. And we for real just got to talk about Kanye West walking into that damn pole. Can we just talk about it real fast? So Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, you guys know how much the paparazzi follows Kim Kardashian. You guys also know how much Kanye West hates the paparazzi so we've got these two together and uh, it almost seems like the paparazzi even get gangs up on them more so now that they are in this relationship and now that they are um having this baby they're just always hounded by, by paparazzi right so kanye west he and kim kardashian about to go to lunch and uh you know they're walking up this hill because they're trying to get to the restaurant it looks like they're coming maybe from the parking lot or something and um, kanye west has his head down and so does kim kardashian she has on this god awful dress i'm just like oh my god kim like for real it's black lace it's some over long robe looking thing with some black like look like she might have had on like a cat suit under. i was like this fucking girl ain't never gonna get these clothes right anyway <clears throat> Kanye is coming up there. He's strolling. He got his mean stroll on. He looking straight down, you guys, and he walking. The cameraman just turns away from him. It looked like they might have been because they were backing up. So maybe the cameraman was trying to see where he was going. And as soon as the damn camera turned away, you hear something go boom. <laughs> and and zoom back to him you hear him go oh Kanye he like this and Kim Kardashian is just like holding him like oh baby like are you okay and uh, Kanye West is so pissed off he look at around and he like he's like y'all quit taking pictures quit taking pictures just stop it and the paparazzi are all like still staying there but the paparazzi is just like you can tell everybody want to laugh they're just like oh Kanye we just got here I just got here Kanye I just got here because I'm gonna tell you what Kanye was gonna fuck somebody up okay I have ran into polls before that shit is not them let me tell you what them polls is unforgiving the motherfuckers don't be in <laughs> Uh, that shit just be like standing still I was just like you know how it is when you got your child and, and, and something happened they fall and they trip on the carpet or something they hurt their knee and then you be like that old bad carpet baby go on over there and hit that carpet and then the baby go over there and be like uh somebody tell Kanye like that Kanye that pole hurt that baby did that pole hurt that baby go on over there and hit that pole go hit it Kanye <laughs> Ooh, that shit was so molded. I was just like, oh, I know he feels so stupid. And then, of course, the next couple of days, they have pictures of Kanye walking around town with this big dent in the middle of his head. I mean, he he walked head first into that bitch. I was just like, I know that hurt. Well, Kimye, boy, I tell you, I don't know how them two can do it. All right, in the Good Samaritan news of the day, uh, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine. Is that his name? Jimmy e. Iovine? Iovine? Jimmy? I know I should get these names right before I do the video. Oh, <laughs> Jimmy, I am anyway. Y'all know who I'm talking about, right? Okay. Dr. Dre and Jimmy, we just gonna call him Jimmy, okay? His mama call him Jimmy, I'ma call him Jimmy. They donated $70 million to USC, and uh, in return, USC is going to name a school after them. So the name of the school is gonna be, I'ma gonna read it because it's long. It is the Jimmy Iovine <laughs> or Vine and Andre Young Academy for Arts, Technology, and the Business of Innovation. And it's scheduled to open in fall of 2014. And uh, this is for just, um, you know, it's this is just for people who want to it really sounds like it's for people who want to you know enter into the music industry and this is going to give them all of the backgrounds for whatever field that they decide to do in the music music inter industry entertainment industry i didn't even have no coffee today you guys i don't know what's wrong with me but anyway i just wanted to say that i think that that is a wonderful thing i mean they said that dr dre's net worth is 260 million dollars he also made this great big um profit from selling beats by dre he still gets a percentage of beats by dre evidently and I mean, the man has money beyond money beyond money. And when you have that kind of money, it is great to give back. Because what else do you do with all this money? I mean, everybody say you can't take it with you. So, you know, you might as well give and help. So I think that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Dr. Dre has just come so far. I mean, you guys, we all remember him in his satin suits when he used to be uh, <laughs> the DJ for that group. I don't even remember what the name of the group, but it was in L.A. He used to be like dressed as a doctor and he used to DJ. So, yeah, he's come a long way. He is definitely a success story um, for the music industry, black people, Los Angeles folks, just everybody. So good for them. guys so we got a couple of people that's in anticipating first of all my friend and i was just having a conversation about monica brown and uh, shannon brown them two not having a baby together then like literally the next day or two 
uh, she posts a picture of herself with a five month pregnant belly. So congratulations to Monica and Shannon Brown. This will be their first baby together. Another couple that is expecting from the NBA is Chris and Adrian Bosch. They are expecting their second child together. I think this is gonna be Chris Bosch's third child. Uh, this is uh, Adrian and Chris's second baby together. And even though I don't like Mr. Chris Bosch, I guess I go on and tell you congratulations too. Lauren Hill is going to be going to jail for three months and Lauren Hill has said that while her family is going to be taking primary care of her five children with Rohan Marley, Rohan Marley is uh, expected to step in and help take care of the kids while she is gone. I guess Rohan Marley is not really around while she's here. I didn't know really what was going on. I know they're not together no more, but the way it read in the damn internet was just like it was almost as if uh, <laughs> uh, Lauren was just like, yeah, well, the nigga ain't never around. But, you know, he said he gonna help as much as he can while I'm gone. There's a Bobby Valentino sex tape that's floating around. It's being shopped. And I know many of you guys are waiting to see the five foot two crooner uh, wear the back out of some woman. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just letting y'all know right now just in case y'all get your money together. Zoe Saldana has kind of confirmed in a new uh, interview that she has for some magazine i think it was allure magazine that she is bisexual she says that while she's in a loving relationship with a man that if one day she woke up and wanted to be with a woman and wanted to raise children with a woman she thinks she could do that because it is her life and i was like girl you right it is your life okay so go on and be bisexual then <laughs> what y'all think about that that's so interesting to me what do you guys think like i Y'all know, y'all know I'm not gay. I don't really even have any gay close friends, so I don't, I can't really ask anybody. But what do the gay community? I mean, like lesbians and um, 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 gay men. What do they think about bisexual women? okay or bisexual men do you guys consider i mean like is there is there any issue with uh the fact that somebody can just change their mind one day and go from being with a man or or you know and the next day going to be with a woman or you know vice versa whatever that is like i just always kind of wonder like what does that community think about bisexuals i just want to know that i mean I ain't really got shit to do with nothing today but that's i just always wanted to know that Mike Tyson, he has, has turned his career around and really made a good name for himself uh, lately uh, with this show that he has. You guys know that he has a, um, a show of the same name. I think it's just Mike Tyson where he just sits down and talks to you about his life and things that have happened to him. And supposedly it is a very entertaining show. Um, it's in Vegas. People go and see him and everybody enjoys it. They say that he's pretty funny um, and that, you know, he's got some really good stories. So good for Mike Tyson because you guys know that Mike Tyson is awesome. Always, I just have always felt sorry for Mike Tyson. You know, he's been through so much, and he's he he's just somebody that I, my heart has always been open to. I just feel like there's something else for Mike Tyson, and so good for him. Mike Tyson now has a cartoon on the way. It's going to be called Mike Tyson Mysteries. And it's going to be on the Cartoon Network's Adult Swim channel. Uh, they say that it's going to be coming out in 2014. And it will be a cartoon where Mike Tyson solves mysteries. Okay. And he's got like some smart ass, smart alecky um, pigeon. That's his sidekick. That's going to be like helping him through the clues. So uh, it sounds like it's going to be good. Like I watch it. Y'all watch that damn Black Dynamite. That shit is so fucking funny. So I'm going to watch this Mike Tyson mysteries. Are you guys? Reality talk, you guys are going to be mad at me. I didn't watch the um, R&B Divas last night. However, I did watch the episode last week when Angela Stone came on uh, as the new addition. Now, I'm just going to tell you guys this, okay? I don't think I like Angie Stone. I don't even feel right saying it because I love her music. But see, that's the, sometimes that's what I said about these reality shows. You might have a whole nother image of somebody. And they get their ass on a show like this and then they just, the real them come out. It just makes you not even like them. And she is one of those ones. Now, I get that Faith feels like they need somebody in there as the, like, the intermediary. Somebody that is going to be the mediator. Somebody who is going to just not really be biased and kind of just tell it like it is. And that's all fine and good. But see, you got to remember that these are all grown women and uh, so you got to be having somebody on there who knows how to approach people without it seeming like they're being preachy or judgmental so when they went to the bar 
and uh, they all sat down that conversation got so weird to me because um you know monifa was so extra dramatic i feel like the editing was so weird on there because nothing was really making sense because all of a sudden monifa was real pissed um you know nikki and selena of course um i don't see why everybody feels like selena johnson is this has these anger issues like i've never seen it okay so it's weird it doesn't make sense to me when they keep on saying it even though she said it happened in the past i've never seen it on the show have you guys like i know i didn't watch the show regularly but y'all help me out with it so i don't get why they all are are harping on this nikki and selena thing and selena having an anger problem so that's the first thing now they having this conversation first of all angie stone because she feels like she's losing control of the group she just gets out her blessed oil that i was telling you guys about the other day and she goes and puts a cross on everybody's forehead and you could tell that it was kind of like getting everybody kind of setting them aback but then it also was just like they was gonna deal with it because it was just like well you know maybe she's just a little special and you know how can you cut somebody out that's putting bless oil on your head you know we all believe in god so okay maybe that's gonna help that was whatever okay that whole scene of them arguing at the damn bar none of it made sense to me but what i really want to talk about is when they went to twist when angie stone got there now i get that she might have been frustrated with the last time the way everything went but when she got in there she was just like let me tell you guys something if i see you guys starting to argue and everything i'm out of here i don't stand for that okay i'm too too first class for that to me that meant, even though she didn't say it, I'm first class and you guys are not. And she actually said it in her little confessional thing, but she didn't say it to them. Okay, so immediately that would have rubbed me the wrong way. So that's why I think that Kiki was already feeling the way she was feeling. So when she decides, she's like, we're going to go around the table and let everybody say what they got to say. But I'm letting you guys know, okay, y'all motherfuckers want to get the acting a fool up in here. I'm out. So... You know she goes around the table she gets to nikki nikki says whatever she says and selena says whatever she says and then kiki was just like um i didn't do nothing okay i was forced into it i was brought to the to the argument i ain't got shit to do with nikki and uh selena's problem and i felt her on that okay even though kiki can be very much um interesting as far as that conversation was concerned kiki really wasn't in it when um angie was just kind of just like oh you're not part of it huh and she you know she was just like listen i'm not gonna be talking this is how I'm, this is my thing i'm a grown woman okay now angie i understand that you've been in the music industry all these years and that you have a lot of experience okay maybe more things that i've been through okay so if you want to sit here and tell me some shit about the music industry okay i'm all ears okay i'm gonna listen to that but i am a grown-ass woman just like you i've had life experiences just like you you're not gonna sit here and tell me something preach at me yell at me call me childish or any of that you're not gonna do all of that you're not gonna talk to me like a child i don't appreciate for somebody to approach me that way if i ever feel like somebody is talking down to me or if i feel like somebody is think that they t treat me like a child i will immediately check it because I don't like that. I was all for Kiki, honey. I understood exactly what she meant now. Now, she didn't have to do all the walking out and all that because I don't really think that it was that serious, at least from what we saw. But I felt her. Don't talk to me like no fucking child. And that is what's going to make me not like Angie Stone. If she continues on with that, then yeah, that's going to be a problem. So I didn't watch the episode yesterday. I'm sorry. I know I told you guys I was. But, you know, I'm trying to do the, the review, you know, so we might be just a week behind. I promise next week I'm going to watch it, though, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about American Idol. Who watches American Idol? Do any of you guys even watch American Idol? I don't really think anybody is really watching. And because of that, American Idol producers have decided that they are going to give the show a complete revamp really what they need to do is just cancel the show they don't want to do that they have a lot of fox has a lot of money invested in that show and simon um what's the guy's name the one who produced the one who created the show who's also from so you think you can dance whatever his name is they don't want to cancel this show they want to revamp it because they want to be able to compete against the voice and um x factor and you know those type of shows so they're getting rid of the entire judge panel and they needed to first of all we didn't look at that damn mud black randy jackson like what the fuck is wrong with his makeup <laughs> he is like always oh, y'all look at his neck it be my color all this be black anyway we've been looking at randy for 12 years then we got keith urban mariah carey and Nicki minaj on this season keith urban to me is boring like he has no pizzazz i would never when, when they first cast him i was just like keith urban like out of everybody else you look at him and and uh, nicole kidman you just be like Bleh. the whole beef with Nicki minaj and mariah carey um to me is both very 
childish and um it just kind of brings a it just brings a negative light on the show the sad thing about it is that the contestants have been overshadowed this season because of all the shit that's gone through that's gone on with uh mariah carey and Nicki minaj okay i mean like the care the, the 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 people that sing like who are these people that sing all i know is i want the black girl to win candace i because i I picked her from the very beginning. I said, if that girl don't make it to the finals, then I know some. So I really like that Candace girl. I hope she wins. Actually, I think tonight is the finale show, right? But yeah, they're getting rid of all of them. Good. I don't know what they're going to do, who they're going to bring back. They say they want to bring back uh, Simon and uh, Paula. And I'm just like, good luck with that. Okay, Simon is getting all that he can out of X Factor. Why the hell would he even come back to American Idol? I don't know who they're going to bring back, you know, but they need to just change that show. They just need to take the shit off. Nicki Minaj did an interview with Ryan Seacrest and explained that, you know, this whole beef with Mariah has been just been so heartbreaking um, because, you know, she was just like, imagine, you know, you loving somebody your entire life and then you get to work with them and then they hate you, but you don't even know what you did. I mean, that could probably be a little bit of that. I also say that Nicki Minaj has dug her own, you know, dug a hole around herself as well. So it's been, but we all knew that you didn't need to, to put anybody up there with Mariah Carey okay Mariah Carey should have been the only woman and uh, adding Nicki Minaj was just not a good look it just was not good and I don't know why um, American Idol did that I think they got so big and trying to add this fabulous panel they, they lost sight of what the show is for which is to find talent and to showcase them on the stage so that's what's wrong with uh, uh, American Idol they ain't they ain't coming back I guess uh, Randy and Mariah didn't fell out because Randy been her her uh, manager for like the longest and now they not he not her manager no more so it sounds like everybody just is just like fuck it fuck y'all I'm getting out of here talk about a few new reality shows did you guys know that Bishop Noel Jones and um, Lisa Ray was uh, dating. I've heard rumors about it. It's been floating around uh, for a while that them two were seeing each other. But I just never could see it because, you know, like I used to go to Noel Jones Church when I was in L.A. And uh, he is just, <laughs> you know, when I think of him, I just really think of him. He's like a man of the cloth. He's so knowledgeable and he's so passionate about his the word and all of this. And then when I think of Lisa Ray, and God bless Lisa Ray, I really do like Lisa Ray, too. She just sort of like the anti whatever of uh, Bishop Noel <laughs> like I'm just like she just oozes sex and you know she's always you know it's always titties and ass and white and you know everything cleavage and all this and then she's with Bishop you know Noel Jones and it's just an interesting pair and what then I cannot believe that they actually are going to be on a reality show together it's called the pastors of LA and I'm just praying that my bishop <laughs> has not sold out to the reality world you guys this can't be good this can't be good i'm gonna watch though <laughs> there have been some people that have already seen the the pilot or this the first screening of the first show or whatever so it's definitely coming y'all it's gonna be on oxygen it's green lighted on oxygen so we will see what is a relationship with with uh, lisa ray and bishop noel jones like another new reality show will be with CeeLo. okay CeeLo green has a new reality show coming up uh, i don't know what the name of it is i don't know what it's gonna be about i guess it's gonna be about his life as a short arm man <laughs> Y'all know I don't like CeeLo. He is not my favorite person. I will not be watching the reality show, but I just decided to go on and let y'all know about it, okay? All right. Rev Run and his family also have a reality show coming back to television. It will be on HGTV, and it's going to be about the revamping, uh, them remodeling their New Jersey home. That ought to be interesting enough. I mean, I always like to look at Rev Run and his family, and they ain't really nothing. They don't really got nothing really too exciting going on, but I just like to look at their family unit. They kind of remind me um, of the same with like T.I.'s show. Like it ain't nothing. It's just all about the family. And sometimes we need to see that, especially with all the fucked up shit that goes on with these reality shows. Like go on and put Rev Run on there. Let us see how y'all get the spackle on the walls and paint the colors. And let, you know, let's do that for a little while. So it's good. Sweet Brown of the Ain't Nobody Got Time For That fame. She also has a new reality show coming, on, uh, coming out. I don't know where it, was, it is. Y'all, what is wrong with me? I can't. I, what is the words I'm trying to say? I'm trying to get the words out of my mouth. She. Well. The, what is, what was, what was I, who was I talking about? Fucking notes. Sweet Brown. Um, okay, so Sweet Brown has a reality show coming out sometime in 2014. She just finished a movie with uh, Tyler Perry. I think it's called Medea's Christmas. And I was like, ain't that fitting? <laughs> because you know Tyler Perry, he gonna put whatever the hell he feel like putting in his movies. And uh, she also has a, a bunch of other things that's coming out. So yeah, you know, like, good for her. Like,
Like, I mean, for real, that's one of those internet sensations, just like uh, Hydra, Hydra Kids, Hydra Wives, you know, the one who was the first disciple of Judah, the child of Judah. Dude. He rose to some sort of some sort of fame. Um, sweet, sweet, sweet brown is raising to some sweet brown is rising to some sort of fame. And hopefully Charles Ramsey will be able to get on that bus and ride it to fame as well. Get him a little bit of money for some of all that street charm realness that he served us up last week. That's it on all the new reality shows. Now y'all know I didn't really watch Black Ink Crew. I know that was Bondi Blue's show. Um, what is this I hear about Duchess is now a stripper at the King of Diamonds? I was like, for real? Like, fuck, is the struggle that bad? How much did they pay them damn people for the show? I guess they got, they was just like, here, we gonna get y'all this check for $2,000 and y'all come on on this show. Why is she stripping? Seems like she would have been able to parlay Play that um her little stint on black ink crew into something else other than stripping i mean maybe that's what she wanted to do but wasn't she like a model or something i mean she was a pretty girl this is the girl with the dreadlocks right they got pictures of her and there was a flyer going around that you know was her first time stripping at king of diamonds in miami so i guess that's you know i guess that was the aspiration was to go on television and then proceed on to become a stripper at the king of diamonds <laughs> see priorities y'all <laughs> And lastly, you guys, Usher is leaving The Voice um, because he is going to be playing Sugar Ray Leonard in an upcoming biopic or biopic. I never remember how to say that word either. I think he'll be good at Sugar Ray Leonard. I mean, he kind of looks like Sugar Ray Leonard. He kind of got that nose to be like smashed down like this. That's that That's that boxer nose and been broke too many times. He's kind of like Sugar Ray Leonard's build. I'm sure he's going to have to work out quite a bit to get the, to the to the, to the the fighting potential build that uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was. But yeah, he's going to be playing Sugar Ray Leonard in a movie and he's leaving The Voice. I've never really watched The Voice, but um, I always thought that CeeLo Green and uh, Christina Aguilera was a better fit and it looks like CeeLo Green and Christina Aguilera are coming back to The Voice. So I guess Shakira is going to be out and they're going to get their original formula that they had with Adam Levine and the country guy. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. All right, you guys, so we do this every week, okay? So make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.